start really paying attention to what's going on. You know, my grandfather used to have a saying, believe nothing that you hear and half of what you see. I wouldn't believe a thing that comes out of Washington, D.C. In fact, it's my own personal belief that this next election that's coming up next year in November, that every American should march on Washington, D.C. and should fire every single person that's there. They have run this country into the ground. They have totally sold us out to the United Nations for a buck, you know, for the debt. And, you know, even the monetary system, it's just a belief system. We could change that tomorrow if we wanted to. I mean, we're so intelligent. We could create something different, you know, but we're believers. Oh, we've got to have this money. Do you know that we're the only race where people starve, that people are homeless? I mean, it's just, it's such bull. It, it doesn't have to be like this. If you're alive and you're on a planet and other civilizations, even the draconian races, they take care of their own. They don't sell out each other like we do here. They don't throw somebody in the street because they don't have paper, which is really what it is. You know, the only value on it is what we believe it is. They just don't have that. You know, they don't let children starve. They don't feed grain to cattle that feed 20% of the population and let other, the other 25% that need the grain starve. They, it's unconscionable. They would never even think to do that. But we do it here for bucks, for money, for power. That's part of that conditioning process that's been going on 5,700 years. That's part of it. But the responsibility is that there are people that know what is going on and they play the game anyway. They don't have the courage to say, look, folks, let's deal with the realities here. You know, we don't have a guy that's strong enough in, in office as president to stand up and say, you know what, ladies and gentlemen, we've really been sold out. That there are forces within our government like what Kennedy tried to do, that just flat out want to destroy the United States because we're too good, because we have too much. Instead of raising the consciousness and everyday life, a standard of living, instead of raising the standard of living that we have globally, they would rather just destroy the United States, or destroy our standard of living, so that we're comparable to everybody else. So now, everywhere is a third world nation. And that's exactly what they're doing. And they're doing it for power, for greed, we're selling out our own, and it's just, it's, something's got to be done. It all evolves around money, the World Bank, International Monetary Fund. I mean, they've got the whole world in debt. You know, governments are giving away their, their mineral rights in perpetuity. The United States government is, in, is now in a position to declare uh, a national state of emergency, suspend the Constitution of the United States, and nationalize. And the reason they, they will have to nationalize is because our debt far exceeds any ability to pay it back. So who are the collectors? What countries are the collectors? It's not a country. It's a group of men. It's a group of human beings. The cleaning up the planet, we're giving to government bureaucracies. Well, well here's $3 billion here. There's $10 billion there. Here's the super fund to clean up toxic waste, $20 billion. $20 billion. And, and the place is getting worse. You know, that's not the problem. The problem is on an individual level, on an individual basis. Just don't create plutonium anymore. Just tell the industries, the corporations, because we're the ones who control it. We're the ones buying the products. We won't buy it unless you fix it. End of story. Period. We need to change it. It's our planet. We are the bulk of humanity. It isn't the corporations, it isn't the Fortune 500, it isn't the Committee for 300, and it isn't the Trilateral. We could fire all of them if we had to. Period. But it, it's, it's, it's coming together and it's doing something about it. And it's going to have to be grassroots and people are going to have to start doing it soon. Let's take an example of the American Revolutionary War. 4% of the population of the colonies actually rose up and fought the British. Only 4%. The rest stayed home, stayed in the pubs, drinking ale, doing whatever, and waited to see who would end the war, to see who would win. And then when we won, everybody wanted to take credit for it. But it was really only 4%. Those heroes. And those 4% changed the face of the world. 210, 12 years, whatever it is now, we're, we're right back at the same place where we're being called to do exactly the same thing. But the paradox here, Alex, would be then that if we begin to war against ourselves, that's going to exactly fuel the whole fire that's going on. Maybe for a brief time it would, until one side surrendered or saw the light. You know, do you know much about the New World Order? Do you know that they're building concentration camps to put millions of people in? 
Do you know that the United Nations has got 300,000 troops in the United States right now that they're going to use to confiscate weapons? And they're selling our active military troops, sending our active military troops out of the United States so they won't be here when this happens? Are you aware that that's going on? Do you know that just off the coast, of, uh, just south of the border in Veracruz, there are 300 tons of Soviet military equipment ready to invade? I mean, this is uh, that there are states actually wanting to Regions? succeed from the from the union. Yes. Yes, there are seven different, there are nine different regions. The United States is being has already been designated to be split up. They're getting ready to dismantle the United States of America. And you know, the only real part of the United States of America, and I'm get so angry with this, is Washington D.C., 68 square miles. That's really all that is the United States. We are in the Republic of Arizona. People in California are in the Republic of California. It is those separate republics that make up a United States. Washington, D.C. has totally manipulated everything. We don't, we're no longer the United States, what the forefathers founded. It isn't that at all. And, and you know, in 1992, the, United, the Congress approved the U.N. Charter. Well, what people aren't aware of, because it wasn't printed in the press, in the newspapers, in our controlled media, is that because it's a treaty, it supersedes the Constitution of the United States. The UN Charter is now the law of the land, not the Constitution anymore. And in the UN Treaty, Articles 55 and, number, and 56, look it up, folks, prove me wrong, state that the United States Congress no longer abides by the, and has to abide by the U.S. Constitution. As of 1992, the United States of America ceases to exist. They just haven't told the people yet. And they're not going to tell them until after they have outlawed all weapons, after they have totally regulated the Second Amendment and taken everybody's firearms away so you can't fight, so you can't stand there and be free anymore. This is all part of the plan. I think what people need to do is to go back and look at what we call mythology and really start giving it a second look. Uh, uh, Richard, Richard Thompson, in his book, although I've not read it, but I've heard others talk about where he, he, does, he delves into the history of things. Now, and, and it's also important to remember that just because it's history doesn't mean it's accurate history. You know, because it, it has been proven over and over and over again, whoever wins the war rewrites history. They write it to their benefit, to glorify themselves. And it doesn't mean that's really what happened. Our next major leaps in consciousness are going to come from science and archaeology. It isn't going to come from any spiritual leader or teachings. It's going to come from, say, you know what? This, here's the proof. This is true. This is reality. And I don't know what this stuff is. We can't prove that. You know, and, it, and it's time we really start paying attention. If we had a real president in office, and Kennedy was probably really the last one, what he should do is just go on TV and spell it all out. Surround himself with people that maybe he can trust to protect his life. He should get on television he should, um, before Congress and all the houses, the House of Representatives, in front of everybody. And spend three hours and give everybody a real education. Number one, the Federal Reserve is private. Number two, our debt isn't real. Number three, our, 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 we've gotten ourselves into this big mess because past presidents sold us out for comfort and for money um, and, and apologize. And then what he ought to tell, you know, and just say that I'm nationalizing all the banks under the United States Treasury. We're going back to a silver standard, just like the Constitution says, and give everybody an opportunity to, to get back on track here, you know, to maintain our standard of living and just start healing. You know, and then the next thing I would say is, or make sure if there were any POWs alive, that they came back home. And I would start healing all of that crap. The fact that, you know, that our POWs were sold out because of a debt, because of $3 billion, when we've wasted $3 billion or a promise to Vietnam, when we've wasted that kind of money on, on such stupid things as studying the sexual habits of a, of a tsetse fly or frogs mating, I mean, it's just, it's unconscionable that we've allowed our government to do this. Their single most important thing is, and I'll go back to that little saying, the love that you withhold is the pain that you carry. We have got to start coming together as a race. We have, we have this got to stop being, allowing ourselves to be manipulated. Those of us who survive this, this incredible ordeal, 
that we're about to really experience. We'll become new teachers and we'll be able to go to different worlds and teach what we know and be able to teach other evolving civilizations what not to do and how not to get themselves in trouble. And, I mean, we have an incredible future if we can get through this. It's going to, if 10% of the population of the planet can really get it together, it'll create what is called the 100th monkey syndrome. And suddenly, 11, 12, 13%, people will just start getting it. And it's going to take 10%. That's 500, 600 million people right now. It starts on an individual basis. You know, the government's not going to tell you. God, we could be in, they're going to play out the second coming, they're going to try to present a savior, they're going to project holographic images in space and say, we're here to save you, they're going to do mock battle, I mean, they're going to screw with us big time. And folks, we just got to start paying attention. Don't take anything at face value. Make them prove it. Whether you believe a word I'm saying, it doesn't matter. If somebody tells you that this is truth, make them prove it. If it's real, it'll stand up to scrutiny. If it isn't, it won't. Because the truth can always stand on its own. It doesn't need help and it doesn't need lies to, stay, to stand up.